CDL practice test, Texas, general knowledge, part 8. Question number 184. Which of the following CMVS are most likely to get stuck at a raised railroad crossing? A. Moving van. B. Low boy. C. Cock harrier. D. All of the above. The correct answer is here. D. All of the above. Explanation. These trailers can get stuck on raised crossings, low slung units, low boy, car carrier, moving van, possum belly livestock trailer, single axle tractor pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle, tractor. Question number 185. In your pre-trip inspection, you are checking your steering and exhaust systems. Which of these problems should be fixed before the vehicle is driven? A. Oil on the tie rod. B. White smoke from the exhaust pipe before the vehicle warms up. C. Steering play in excess of 10 degrees. The correct answer is here. C. Steering play in excess of 10 degrees. Explanation. If there is more than 10 degrees of play in your steering wheel, your vehicle will be harder to steer. Have the problem corrected before you drive the vehicle. In cold weather, white exhaust smoke that soon disappears may just be water vapor from condensation. However, if white smoke persists long after the vehicle has warmed up, have the condition checked. Question number 186. If you pay a parking ticket, do you have to notify your employer? A. No. B. Yes, within 14 days. C. No, until the problem is repaired. D. Yes, within 7 days. The correct answer is here. A. No. Explanation. You must notify your employer within 30 days of conviction for any traffic violation except parking, even if you weren't driving a CMV at the time. Question number 187. You should try to park your vehicle so that A. There is at least one curb next to your vehicle. B. Your vehicle is protected by trees or some overhang. C. You can pull forward when you leave. The correct answer is here. C. You can pull forward when you leave. Explanation. Avoid backing your vehicle whenever possible. For example, when you park. Do so in a way that will let you drive forward, not backward, to exit the parking space. Question number 188. When must you wear a seatbelt? A. Whenever you're driving a CMV. B. Whenever you are hauling hazardous materials. C. Only in states where the law requires it. The correct answer is here. A. Whenever you're driving a CMV. Explanation. Federal regulations require the driver and all passengers in a moving CMV to wear seat belts. Unless, of course, the vehicle isn't equipped with M49 CFR 392.16. Question number 189. Wheel bearing seals should be checked for. A. Gasoline. B. Color changes. C. Leaks. The correct answer is here. C. Leaks. Explanation. 
During step 5, walk around inspection of the 7 step inspection method. Check the wheel bearing seals for any signs of cracks or leaks. Question number 190. When passing a motorcycle, keep in mind that A. It can swerve more sharply than a car. B. Motorcyclists can be reckless. C. Your vehicle can drag your motorcycle off course. D. It may be able to accelerate much faster than you can. The correct answer is here. C. Your vehicle can drag your motorcycle off course. Explanation. Your large vehicle generates air suction that can pull the motorcycle 2 or 3 feet toward you, depending on the relative speed of the vehicles. For this reason, always leave at least 6 feet of space between your vehicle and the motorcycle. Question number 191. Tie downs must be of the proper type and strength. According to federal regulations, the aggregate working load limit of the cargo tie downs must be enough to secure a 3 times the weight of the cargo tied down, b twice the weight of the cargo tied down, c one half times the weight of the cargo tied down. The correct answer is here, C. One half times the weight of the cargo tied down. Explanation. Under federal regulations, the aggregate working load limit of the tie downs used to secure cargo must be at least one half times the weight of the cargo. Federal regulations also specify a formula to compute the aggregate working load limit of the tie downs from the working load limits of the individual tie downs. The working load limit of an individual tie-down is defined as the maximum load that may be applied to it, as specified by its manufacturer, 49 CFR 393.106, 49 CFR 393.5. Question number 192. An empty tank vehicle may, A. Have better handling. B. Be able to travel at faster speeds. C. Not be permitted to have bulkheads. D. Take longer to stop. The correct answer is here. D. Take longer to stop. Explanation. Because an empty tank will not weigh as much. It will not have the same level of traction as a full tank. For this reason, empty tanks may require a greater stopping distance than full ones. Question number 193. Which of these is a good driving rule for work zones? A. Use your four-way flash airs or brake lights to warn drivers behind you. B. Slow down. C. Both of these answers are correct. The correct answer is here. C. Both of these answers are correct. Explanation. In a work zone, drive slowly and carefully. Use your brake lights and four-way flashes to warn drivers behind you. Question number 194. To transport cargo safely, which of the following are you not responsible for? A. Ensuring the freshness of sealed cargo. B. Inspecting the cargo. C. Making sure that cargo is properly secured. D. Recognizing possible overloads. The correct answer is here. A. Ensuring the freshness of sealed cargo. Explanation. You are not responsible for the state of sealed cargo, nor can you inspect it. You are only responsible for the safety of the cargo, ensuring that it is balanced, secured, 
and not overloaded, and does not get in the way of emergency equipment. Question number 195. What is the purpose of a headerboard? A. To let you take notes while you're driving. B. To prevent objects from flying around the cab in a crash. C. To act as decorative covering for your radiator intake grill. D. To protect you from your cargo in a crash or sudden stop. The correct answer is here. D. To protect you from your cargo in a crash or sudden stop. Explanation. A front end header board is located at the front part of a trailer. The header board will block cargo from moving forward and possibly injuring you. In the event of a crash or sudden stop, check to make sure that the header board is secure, upright, and undamaged. No dents, no corrosion, no missing rivets, etc. Question number 196. When should you review the post-trip inspection report from the previous driver? A. You should review it once a week. B. It doesn't have to be reviewed. C. You should review it during your pre-trip inspection. The correct answer is here. C. You should review it during your pre-trip inspection. Explanation. Before performing the pre-trip inspection on your vehicle, review the previous driver's post-trip inspection report. Check whether all problems discovered by the last driver have been repaired. Question number 197. In Texas, the maximum weight for a single or combination vehicle including its load is A. 50,000 pounds B. 70,000 pounds C. 80,000 pounds D. 60,000 pounds The correct answer is here. C. 80,000 pounds. Explanation. In Texas, the maximum weight for a single or combination vehicle including its load is 80,000 pounds and less. You obtain an oversized overweight permit from the Texas Department of Transportation Permit Office. Note, there are also size limits and axle weight limits that you must not exceed either. Check with the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles for details. Left square bracket. Texas size and weight limits. Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. HTTP. TXDMV. Gov Motor Carriers Oversize Overweight Permits Texas Size Weight Limit Slash 32 Motor Carriers Main Menu. Question number 198. What emergency equipment should you ensure to have with you in your cab? A. Cell phone. B. Batteries and a flashlight. C. Extra blankets and water. D. Triangles and a fire extinguisher. The correct answer is here. D. Triangles and a fire extinguisher. Explanation. While the other options may come in handy, the safety equipment that is required to be in every vehicle are a rated fire extinguisher and reflective triangles. Question number 199. If an accident victim is bleeding heavily and no qualified professional is available, what can you do to help? A. Apply direct pressure to the wound. B. Try to bandage the wound. C. Wind a tourniquet above the wound. D. Nothing. Wait for qualified professionals to arrive. The correct answer is here. A. Apply direct pressure to the wound. Explanation. 
If there are no qualified professionals on the scene as yet, do what you can to help the injured until they arrive. To stop heavy bleeding, apply direct pressure to the wound until the bleeding stops. Use gauze from a first aid kit, a piece of clothing, or even just your hand if necessary. Question number 200. While driving through snow, your windshield wipers become ineffective because they are not close enough to the window to scrape the snow off. What should you do? A. Turn the wiper speed to its highest setting. B. Keep driving until the snow stops and the wipers are no longer needed. C. Spray the windshield with washer fluid. D. Pull to the side of the road to safely fix the issue. The correct answer is here. D. Pull to the side of the road to safely fix the issue. Explanation. If the windshield wipers aren't working in cold conditions, it's important to pull to a safe area on the side of the road before attempting to fix the issue. Question number 201. The safety release valve is located on the air tanks and is used by A. Pulling a hand valve. B. Must be pulled after every working day. C. Self-operated when the air pressure is above 150 C. The correct answer is here. C. Self-operated when the air pressure is above 150 C. Explanation. A safety relief valve is installed in the first tank the air compressor pumps air to. The safety valve protects the tank and the rest of the system from too much pressure. The valve is usually set to open automatically at 150 C. Question number 202. What factors determine your selection of a safe speed when going down a long, steep downgrade? A. Speed space distance perception. B. Reaction time distance speed vehicle size. C. Perception reaction speed of vehicle stopping distance. D. Weight of vehicle length of grade steepness road conditions weather. The correct answer is here. D. Weight of vehicle length of grade steepness road conditions weather. Explanation. When choosing a safe speed, your most important consideration is to select a speed that is not too fast for the total weight of the vehicle and cargo, length of the grade, steepness of the grade, road conditions and weather. Question number 203. Regarding fire safety. Which of the following is the correct list of items you should check during your pre-trip? Inspection, A. Cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems, B. Fuel and fire extinguisher, C. Tires, cargo, fuel, steering wheel, electrical, exhaust systems, fire extinguisher, D. Tires, cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems. Fire extinguisher. The correct answer is here. D. Tires, cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems, fire extinguisher. Explanation. Tires, cargo, fuel, the electrical system, and exhaust systems are all causes of fires. To avoid a fire, you should inspect them before the trip and ensure your fire extinguisher is charged. Question number 204. What is the average reaction distance? A. 32 feet. B. 93 feet. C. 61 feet. The correct answer is here. C. 61 feet.
Explanation. 3 stroke 4 second to 1 second at 55 miles per hour this accounts for 61 feet traveled. Question number 205. Containerized loads, A. Do not need to be inspected or secured by the driver, B. Should come with their own tie-down devices, C. Are typically used for freight carried partway by rail or ship. The correct answers here, C, are typically used for freight carried partway by rail or ship. Explanation. Containerized loads usually travel partway by rail or ship. They are transported by truck at the start or toward the end of their journey. Containerized loads are sealed. Usually, you are not allowed to break the seals to inspect them. However, you are responsible for ensuring that the load is secured on your vehicle and it won't cause your vehicle to exceed gross weight or axle weight limits. Question number 206. All of the following behaviors are signs of aggressive driving except a. Purposely blocking another vehicle from changing lanes. b. Purposely straddling two lanes of traffic. c. Frequent changes of speed. The correct answer is here. C. Frequent changes of speed. Explanation. Aggressive driving is driving in a selfish or pushy manner, which is dangerous enough. Road rage is even worse. Intentionally driving to harm someone or physically assaulting someone in his or her vehicle. Examples of aggressive driving include tailgating, purposely straddling two lanes of traffic, purposely blocking another vehicle from changing lanes and honking the horn to express annoyance, anger, or frustration. Examples of road rage include deliberately ramming another vehicle and exiting one's vehicle to directly confront another driver. However, there are legitimate situations in which a motorist may need to change speeds frequently, such as in heavy traffic or on winding roads.